Welcome back to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. I'm Stelios Hatsakis, CEO of One Business World. Leading Entrepreneurs of the World features entrepreneurs, founders, and business leaders presenting on cutting edge topics and the latest industry developments. Our goal is to provide the global business and entrepreneurial communities with a window into the minds of those who are shaping the future of the world. Today, we're very pleased and honored to welcome New York City Police Department detective and leading entrepreneur and social entrepreneur, Robert Garland, and leading finance entrepreneur and social entrepreneur and CFO, Mike LaLuna. Robert is the founder and CEO of Fund the First. As an active first responder, Robert has seen firsthand the hardships that the brave men and women who serve their communities face both on and off duty. As CEO and founder of Fund the First, his sole mission is to provide a trustworthy platform where fellow first responders, members of the military, and their families can get financial support in times of need. The inspiration for Fund the First came when Robert set out to help his superior officer who was facing mounting medical expenses related to his daughter's rare illness. As he researched the best ways to raise money, he realized his brothers and sisters in blue were skeptical of existing crowdfunding sites. It was then Robert made the decision to build a better platform that all first responders and military can trust. Mike is Robert's co-founder and the CFO of Fund the First. Michael is a certified public accountant with a wide range of experience in areas such as assurance, taxation, entity formation, business structuring, offers and compromise and internal controls. At Fund the First, Robert, Michael, and their team provide other first responders, military and medical professionals with a trusted place to get the support they need when they need it, making sure that every crowdfunding campaign is verified and that the donor's money goes to the intended person, providing as a result a trusted platform and community for America's heroes to receive the support needed. Robert, Mike, it is a great pleasure and a great honor to have you here with us today to hear more on the very important topic of why verification is very important for all those who wish to raise capital through crowdfunding. Thank you and welcome to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. Stelios, thank you so much for having us. It's an absolute honor to be speaking through One Business World and Michael and I are very, very excited. Thank you, Robert. Stelios, that was quite the introduction. I don't think I've ever had one such as that. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Welcome. It's an honor. Absolute honor. So I guess we'll take over from here. So for everyone listening, again, thank you for listening in. Uh, I'll give a quick rundown of what we're going to speak about today. And I hope everybody really takes some value away from the information that we're going to provide. So I'm going to give an introduction of myself. Michael's going to introduce himself as well. We're going to go into what Fund the First is and why it was developed, where we are today, where we expect to be in the future, what we're doing through capital raises as well, and why in the entire industry, why crowdfunding is so important. So I'll start really quick. Myself is, my name is Robert Garland, as Steli is so, so kindly introduced. I'm an NYPD detective of 13 years. I spent the majority of my time working in narcotics in lower Manhattan, doing tons of large scale investigations. But I also have a business background and doing those, those investigations helped to excel my business career because of the amount of information that you have to retain and you have to put out there and to solve crimes. So being a CEO of a company really goes hand in hand with being a detective because of all the amounts of information that you have to store and be able to put out there for your team and to make sure that your company and your team is very successful in the industry that you go into. Um, so during my time in narcotics, uh, like Stelios was saying, there was a need. One of my supervisors and one of my closest, fr closest friends, Jason Stocker, his daughter was going through an extreme medical and financial hardship. She was born with a very rare illness, known as Alexander disease. And unfortunately, Jason and his wife, Bernith, they had to travel to Pennsylvania every single month, uh, every, I'm sorry, every week um, to get help. And it was very hard to see them going through this, especially as a father myself. I have three children and his daughter, Callie, was born two days apart from my middle child. So missing those milestones with him and missing the, the hanging out and the fun that you go through as a parent 
it was sad to see. So I wanted to extend him help. How do I get him help? So I said to Jason, I said, Jason, let's get you on a crowdfunding platform. Let's raise you some money. Let's get on GoFundMe or FundMe, one of these entities, and do some, do some work on there to really get you some help. And he didn't want to. He did not want to go on there because in the industry, there's a lot of scams, unfortunately. There's a lot of fraud. There's a lot of people saying that they are one thing and they're actually something else. And we'll get into that later on. But that's why Fund the First was developed to provide our nation's heroes with this special source to raise money. And it's not just about our nation's heroes. It's about their friends, their families, nonprofits alike, businesses alike. And we'll get into all of that as well. But that's myself. I'm the CEO of the company. And I'm also an NYPD detective. And thank you. I'll introduce Michael right now. And Michael will do a little introduction on himself. Hi, everybody. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen in. Uh, my name is Mike LaLuna. I am the CFO and co-founder of Fund the First. Um, I am a tax CPA partner at a firm that I, uh, that I manage here in uh, Merrick, New York. Um, I actually started my career back in 2012 at a large firm uh, working in the auditing department and doing the nitty gritty tax work on public companies and private companies. Um, and after, uh, actually, let me back up a little bit because the story of how Robert and I came to be today partners in, in Fund the First is um, it takes us back to our college baseball days when we played for New York Institute of Technology together. Um, we played for Bob Hirschfield, Division One baseball over there, and we both graduated in 2008. Um, from there, I went on and played a couple of years in the minor leagues for the Detroit Tigers organization and got my opportunity to try and make it to play in the major leagues, uh, unfortunately falling a little bit short of that and then starting my career as a CPA. Um, and then fast tracking to where we are today, Fund the First has been around for about a year and a half now. Uh, we officially launched in July of 2020 and um, the you know, the prior few months of development and capital raise is kind of what we're going to get into today a little bit and explain to you how some of that went on and uh, how we all work together to, to make this a dream come true. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, playing baseball together, I mean, that was incredible. We love that. Love playing ball, but it, it brings our family together and why we're so, we work so well together. So crowdfunding as a whole, there's always a common uh, question. What is crowdfunding, right? And it's really the ability to raise funds online. And it's through your networks, through your family, through your friends. And there's actually 191 crowdfunding platforms out there. And of those 191 crowdfunding platforms, that's a mix of donation-based and equity-based where people could actually be selling equity through their companies or donation-based where they're looking to raise funds for an illness, a surgery, a death, whatever it may be. So of those 191 platforms, the industry is very large. It's, Mike, what is it, $5.5 billion? And growing. Uh, every year, uh, they expect it to be almost $100 billion in, uh, by the year 2025. Yeah, it's a gigantic industry. And that money is comprised of over 600 million campaigns. So if you look at all these, all these uh, platforms out there, there's 600 million fundraising campaigns out there in the entire industry. That means every day there's tens of thousands camp of campaigns being created since really the crowdfunding in industry's inception of what, 2010 or 2009? Is that when it was? Yeah, I'd say that's when, you know, one of the larger platforms uh, started becoming uh, a full household name. Um, you know, there's been a lot of tragedy in the past 20 years and um, a lot of fundraising uh, opportunities have been placed on online platforms because the awareness to the public is just much more greater than, you know, trying to reach people by mail. Right. No, it, it is great. So crowdfunding works in the unique way where you set up a crowdfunding campaign, a fundraising campaign, and you're sharing it with your network. So you have a unique link to your campaign itself. And you're saying, please donate, please share, please help us out during our time of need, whatever it may be. So Fund the First was developed, again, to give, our, to give those who serve, and I'm going to share the website actually really quick. So let's share our screen. So for those of you watching and listening in, so this is our website right here. It's trusted crowdfunding for those who serve. And as you can see, we're verified with ID me. Now, this is very important in the crowdfunding industry and, and a big topic on our um, 
presentation, which is why verification is important in the crowdfunding industry. And we touched on it briefly. Now, what happens is you see it time and time again. How often do we see, and we're going to use our nation's heroes, for example, because that's the target niche and the target audience that we cater to. How often do we see nowadays a police officer killed in the line of duty? It's unfortunate. It's tragic. You see it every day almost. And it's unbelievable that this is happening. But the communities come together and they support those families. Also, people come together and they try to scam those families and they try to use someone else's hardship to their benefit, to make their own money, to pocket. And it's really unfortunate what goes on out there. You see it time and time again, within an hour of, any, of one of these incidents, you're going to see on one of these platforms, a fundraising campaign go up. And then all of a sudden you're going to see another one. And then before you know it, there's six or seven of them all raising money for the same exact person. But then you read these stories. Not one of those stories is authorized. You'll see, I went to middle, middle school with this person, but I live in Texas now when the incident was in California. Well, how is that person getting that money to those people that need it? And that's the problem. That's the major problem because there's no verification. There's no vetting. All of these platforms, they just allow for campaigns to just go up. And people donate blindly. And that's what happens. And you know what? Unfortunately, the news out there, they don't do their research either. They see a campaign go up and they see because there's money in it. Hey, we're going to share it out there too. And then before you know it, there's a campaign with $150,000 in it that was never authorized by the family. And the family doesn't even know. And they only caught win because of the news. And then what happens? They go through a battle. They go through a battle where they have to get their departments involved and their lawyers involved to contact that person that's doing that fundraiser and make sure that they're the ones receiving those funds. And we see that all too often nowadays. And that's why Fund the First was developed. And the ID me aspect that we have with that verification is so crucial. Now, what we do is every campaign that comes into our platform, you have to be either a first responder, military, medical professional, active or retired. You have to be a nonprofit organization or you have to be a business. So now what happens is when you start the campaign, the beneficiary must verify through ID me. And it's a two-step process to start the campaign. They're verifying their first responder, medical or, or uh, um, military status. And then at the end, Michael, what are they doing at the end? In order to receive a payout, they have to do what? They have to verify their complete identity through ID me. Right. So it's a two-step process to ensure not only that it's trusted for the people starting the campaign, but to ensure that it's trusted for the people that are donating to the campaign. Because donors want to know that their money is actually going to a true and honest source. So that's why Fund the First was developed. So let me throw, scroll through the website really quick. Let's scroll down. As you can see, we've been featured all over the news in the past year, uh, almost a year. We launched July of 2020. Uh, we've been on some big time news, news uh, outlets, over 100 now. Uh, you see, we have different services. We have military, law enforcement, dispatch, firefighters, correction, medical. If you click on each one of these, it'll bring you to different campaigns. We also have trending campaigns. See a couple of these up here right now that are trending. Uh, these always change when you revisit the website. So there's always different eyes on different campaigns as well. Then we have our stats. So this is really unique. We like to be transparent. Listen, we never wanted to be a company that's out there that's not showing what we're doing because it's all about trust. Right, especially to those who serve, you know, law enforcement, firefighters, military, they want to have a trusted platform that they can rely on and not have to worry about things. So that's why we show these statistics. That's why we show out of our campaigns, we have 188 campaigns on the platform since July. And we've raised through those campaigns $1.2 million. It's a lot. So, Mike, what's the average on, the, on those campaigns if you do the math on that? The average in the industry is about 7,000. Um, per campaign that's typically raised. Yes, there are campaigns that will be zero and raise no money, but then there will be campaigns that raise one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. But across the board, the average campaign is about seven thousand. Um, not based off the numbers here, because this I'm giving you total industry standards. Um, you know, our campaigns have been doing pretty well. Um, and it really just depends on the person's network and how well they share it. If they can get their union, if they can get their department, if they can get their business or building to share the campaign to the masses, uh, that's, that's where the powerful uh, aspect of crowdfunding comes in. Right. It's, it's, it's really, really powerful. So again, some of our campaigns, like Michael said, some of them raise zero dollars. And what happens is people don't, Number one, they don't know how to share their campaign. And number two, 
they overcome their pride just enough to create the campaign, but then they don't overcome it enough to get out to social media and share it with their networks. And people need an emotional connection. Even though at Fund the First, we do do our work and effort to put it on our social medias as well with our followings. We put it on our newsletters and we put it out there. But it's so important for people to know that when they do their own fundraising campaign, the people that are going to donate are their networks, the people that could be emotionally tied to that campaign. So it's so important to really share it and let people understand that you need help, you know, for whatever it may be. And we raise money. Our platform allows for people to raise money for so many different instances. It's illnesses, surgeries, deaths, catastrophic losses, good causes, which is like a fundraiser. You want to do a toy drive or a food, uh, food drive, whatever it may be. Um, there's also equipment for departments, which is great. I mean, there's so many departments and a lot, I'll backtrack for a second. Fund the first, as you're aware, because of why we started, it wasn't started because of the defund the police movement or the defund any department movement, but there are a lot of departments out there that are being defunded or that have never had the proper amount of funds. So we allow for them to come on our platform and raise funds for their department in order to continue working which is really important. Then there's business ventures. And Mike, I'll let you talk about the business venture campaigns. So the business venture campaigns are for those first responders, military, medical professionals that do have a business uh, that they run. So if you have a business and you need some startup funding, you can create a campaign that helps get your business off the ground. As long as you are a first responder and you verify through ID me for that. So that's, that's really unique because there are other platforms out there that allow you to raise, you know, um, startup funds for your business. But what's unique about us is that the eyes that are on our site are in the same industry as you. So what better place to, to seek funding than fund the first for those that are in the industry? Um, this is an example of a, uh, a military vet who started a, a business that was called um, edible, it's, it's for edible crayons, essentially. Uh, crayons Ready to Eat is the name of his company, but he created a product that relates to uh, people in the military because they do snack on crayons and the crayons are edible. They're made out of a candy. So it's a very unique concept, and uh, he, he's able to ship now all over the country to uh, various people in the military. And it's great. With, the, with these business venture campaigns, we allow for people to select a tier. So they could select a tier. It brings them right over here to the different tier models, and then they could select, and that could be the one that they want to donate. And when you donate, you could either create an account, you could log in, or you could continue as a guest. So that's a quick rundown of our business venture campaigns, which is so awesome. I mean, giving people the opportunity to receive donations. Now it's not equity. We're not registered through Edgar and the SEC to be able to sell equities on a platform yet. That may be something that we're looking into down the line. However, especially for, our, for those who serve. However, right now we allow for people to receive donation-based tiers and tier levels in order to help their companies grow. Um, so I want to go back for a second. I want to show another campaign uh, actually, I'm going to go back to the homepage really quick. So as you see, trending campaigns, fund the first stats. We have a nonprofit organization as well. Uh, it's called the Fallen First Reserve. This is something that launched fairly recently. And thanks to the president of the Fallen First Reserve, which is Mitch Weinstein, retired police officer. And he's in the insurance agency now. Um, he launched this basically to provide line of duty death families with financial support. And it's no questions asked. Here's a $5,000 check from the Fallen First Reserve. Here you go. And that's at fallenfirstreserve.org if anyone wants to take a look at that. But the concept behind that also goes hand in hand with Fund the First to allow our nation's heroes to understand that we're here, we care about them, and we want to help. Um, we also have a lot of partners. So in the business industry, everybody knows partnering with people is so important. And you know, for so many different reasons, whether it be a basic MOU of a logo swap or whether it be a full scale affiliate marketing program. So right now we have tons of partners with uh, different unions, different nonprofit organizations, different businesses, but we also have a unique partnership with Gauls. And Mike, you want to talk about that really quick? Yeah, sure. Gauls is one of the leading providers of tactical equipment and supplies 
for public safety officers and anybody that's a first responder that needs to purchase equipment. Uh, Galls is incredible. They are uh, nationwide and they do a great job providing uh, tactical supplies for our first responders out in the field. Um, Galls is, is part of our, our partnership and uh, together we're able to help spread the mission of both our companies um, across the platform of the, the United States together. So now what they're doing also is they're sponsoring law enforcement campaigns because they're part of the law enforcement uh, network, uh, heavily part of the law enforcement network. So I'll show one of them. Like I said earlier, you see this all too often, tragically a line of duty death for a first responder, especially our law enforcement officers. This happened just on Monday. Uh, Deputy Sammy Leonard, he was killed in the line of duty down in Texas. And his family is here. This is his wife, Morgan Leonard. She's completely verified through our system. And his sister, Tian Garner, uh, set up this campaign. It's now at $11,000 through 58 donors. Um, so it's doing very well. But this is something that Gals also does through our affiliate marketing program where they're sponsoring these campaigns. Yeah, so as people donate to the campaign, um, they will be able to click a link to Gals and get a discount uh, if they wanted to purchase anything from Gals. And that's a great uh, sponsorship that Gauls is giving. Um, so we're, we, we're very proud of that partnership with them. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. So I'm gonna click on our commercial really quick. We have a commercial because a lot of people, there's always a misunderstanding where people come to our platform and they either think that it was just a page that was set up really quick by somebody and they don't understand that Fund the First is a full platform or they think that we're GoFundMe or Fundly or one of these other uh, platforms. They don't understand because a lot of people, when it comes down to it, most people don't read. They just see a donate button, they donate and that's it. They just give. Um, but we that's why we have this button right here, fund the first in 30 seconds. So I'm gonna play a commercial. It's really unique. It gives a quick breakdown of exactly who we are. So just stand by for one second. So that's a quick 30 second breakdown of our of our platform. I'm not sure if the volume really came through, but on any one of our campaigns, you could click on and get that commercial. It's also on our YouTube channel as well. Um, but it's it's important for people to understand when they come to the platform because we have, as you see, we have over 11,000, we're almost at 12,000 unique donors. That means all, of those $1.2 million raised, that's come through almost 12,000 people. The majority of those people don't, necessarily realize that we're a platform. But these people right here, the over 4,000 people that have registered understand. So it's really important for people to know that we are a platform, that if you need to use our platform for whatever it may be, your fundraising needs, you know, please, please, please remember that we are here and we do exist. So that's a quick breakdown of our platform. I wanna take a step back for a second and really talk about what goes into business. And I know we have a lot of business people that are going to be listening in on this. And everybody goes through the same uh, leaps and bounds when they're starting a company. And that's raising capital. That's authorizing shares. That's putting together your team. You know, raising capital is hard. It's a hard, hard thing to do. And luckily, we were able to do it um, this time last year. And we successfully funded a seed round uh, to get this platform started. But I'm going to let Michael talk about that because Michael is a CPA. He's the expert in the space. So Mike, if you want to touch on our, uh, on our raise, our capital raise at the beginning, and then maybe we could go into uh, what we're looking to do now. Sure. So when we initially came together and put the team um, in place for Fund the First, we're talking back in 2019. This is pre-pandemic, 2019, the team's getting together. We're trying to figure out what, what this is going to be. Uh, initially, it was started as a nonprofit. Um, but you couldn't get 501c3 exemption because you can't start a crowdfunding campaign for an individual person. It doesn't work in the eyes of the IRS. They only allow you to fundraise for an overall cause. Um, officers that were killed in the line of duty, uh, firefighters with cancer, that general cause will allow you to file a 501c3 exemption status. 
with IRS. So we decided to do that with our nonprofit, which we already spoke about before called the Fallen First Reserve. But for Fund the First, we took a different approach because we wanted to allow crowdfunding for first responders and people in the military. Um, so we initially started down the nonprofit, switched gears in, I think, October is where we really switched gears. October of 2019 is where this all came together. And then we started putting the team together to uh, solidify everything that we needed to do. So we the company was formed, um, team was put in place, uh, initial founding shares were, were issued, and then we created our business plan, created our financial projections, and then went out on the road and literally were pitching to people um, uh, in various states throughout the country and mainly from our friends and family network. Uh, that's how we started. So um, the people in our network were the ones that jumped in. They loved the concept. And uh, I, I mean, it was, it was insane going back to back on calls with you, Rob, and speaking to various investors about uh, what we're doing. And I think I didn't have, we didn't have one negative from any of our investors. I mean, yeah, there were some people that said, oh yeah, it's too early for us. You know, we don't want to take the risk, but you know, did you have something to add on that? Because I know you, we have no. stories about <laughs> speaking to these investors, but we're not going to too many details about it. It, it was really an experience. And for anybody that's gone through capital raises and trying to raise capital, especially from friends and family. Now, going to the venture capital scene is a whole different story. But from friends and family trying to trying to raise money, it's tough because you're asking, sometimes you're asking a friend, hey, invest, you know, trust in what we're doing. You know, you can't make promises, obviously. But, you know, when you have passion in your voice and you have a love for what you're doing, people see it in a different way. And they're going to relate to it right away. And they're going to say, you know what? I'll throw a couple of dollars at this. I will come in. You know, it's all about making sure that you have that vision together. And it's so important for all entrepreneurs and people in the business world to understand that your vision is so important. And if you have that clear and crisp vision and people understand what your motives are and what you're looking to do to really give back to the community that you're looking to serve, they want to be involved. And that could go for any business whether you're in the technology aspect, which we are tech also, but whatever business it is, there's could always, you could always fall back and look at a way of how are we supporting the communities? How are we doing that? How are we helping others? Because every business has that way of doing it. And it's just being able to relate that to people. And now when they see that, they say, okay, I want to be involved in it. And we were very fortunate and it is public information. We raised, we did well in our, in our seed round. You know, we did very, very well. And we're very fortunate to have those investors come in and support us through through Fund the First to be able to get the platform started because raising capital and having that money available now helps with all different expenses, Mike, right? Like what? You know, marketing, yeah. everything. The biggest stuff for us is, is getting the brand out there and the awareness. Um, so spending, a money, spending the money on advertising uh, is very important and strategically doing that is critical. Um, you know, a large part of the capital raise did go towards developing the technology. You know, there's a lot, a lot of tech built into the platform um, and that kind of stuff costs money. Um, so, you know, right now we're, we're doing fine. We're actually in the middle of another capital raise, which um, we can go ahead and touch on. Uh, it's at republic.co. Uh, we did a crowdfunding. I'll share the screen. Okay. So we did a crowdfunding raise with Republic, which is actually for equity. Um, it's through what's called a SAFE, which is a subscription agreement for future equity. And you could see the metrics on the campaign page right there. So if anybody's interested in joining our family, we'd be uh, absolutely obliged to have you come join us and uh you know you can take a look at the crowdfunding campaign there but what a unique opportunity for a crowdfunding platform such as fund the first to be able to go to a crowdfunding platform such as republic to then raise capital for the business uh it's a great opportunity and uh you know it, it actually ends in august so we have a couple more months of action on on this capital raise so republic.co is where you can go and just look up on the first, uh, another platform that allows you to raise money through equity. 
the government initially started at a, a cap for Reg CF, which is Reg crowdfunding, uh, of a million seventy, and the rules changed in this this year, March of 2021. The rules changed to allow you to raise up to five million on crowdfunding platforms for equity. So it's really really uh, unique, and the opportunity for the cap raised to be five million came during the pandemic really is where the government started to think about it because it was hard for businesses to go out there and raise capital in the middle of a pandemic. So they said, let's lift the, the ceiling on the, on the million 70 to make it 5 million to give businesses that are out there that are struggling the opportunity to go raise money on these various crowdfunding sites so that uh, they could at least stay afloat if they were an operating business or if they were a new business, they can actually get started and be at a comfortable point in their uh, financial history. This is our team. Uh, we're just scrolling through a bunch of different pages uh, on the campaign. Uh, this, these are our board of advisors. Uh, these are a lot of the articles we've been featured in. But take a look if you're interested. Republic is a great platform where you can go and raise capital for your, your business. Yeah, you know what, and it, it falls back on the topic of why verification is so important. Now, we're a donation-based industry platform. So what that means is people could do fundraisers for whatever they want for the most part, but we've verified the beneficiary of each campaign to make sure that everything is trusted, secure, and ensure the donors know that their money is going to a true and honest source. Now, with Republic, it's basically the same thing. Republic is registered with the SEC, with Edgar. It's all through the portals. And they have to verify us. They have to verify our EIN. They have to ver verify our status. They have to do their due diligence on us as founders of a company. And it took five weeks to launch this campaign. It's not like we just submitted and that was it. It's a lot, a lot of work. There's lawyers involved. There's everything. So if you're familiar with raising capital, you're still drafting, a P basically you're drafting a PPM again, you know, but it's a public document through the crowd safe. And, but it's a little bit different. Now, as you can see, our first round, we raised $550,000. There were minimums on that. You know, there was a couple thousand dollar minimums for people that they had to come in. But the unique thing, like Michael was saying, with this, by doing this, you only have to invest a hundred dollars to be part of our family. And you know, I'm not we're not asking anybody to invest, obviously. If you want to join our family, you know, by all means. But it just shows that this is a totally different aspect of the crowdfunding industry and how trusted it could be. And this is really important because everything's there. When you invest on Republic, they're going to ask for your social security number. They're going to ask for your date of birth, your address, everything, you know, because they need to do their due diligence to make sure that you are who you say you are, especially when you're investing money into a company. So right now we're at a, a little over $100,000 raised in only like two or three weeks, which is great. And uh, we're still uh, marching towards our goal, our max goal, which is great. Um, but I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. Uh, again, if anyone's interested in that, it's on our homepage at fundthefirst.com. You click on the link at the bottom, or you could go to uh, republic.co. Um, so, so Mike, let's see. Is there anything else we want to touch on um, before we end today? I know we covered a lot, uh, and I'm, I'm, I really hope that the listeners, um, if you want, please reach out to us if there's any questions, because I hope that you all took a lot a lot away from what we're speaking about with the crowdfunding industry, with business building, um, you know, with supported networks and all that kind of stuff. So if you want, you can email us at info at fundthefirst.com. You can message us on any social media platform that there is out there. Everything's at fund the first. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, by all means, we're always here. We're open to any questions. We're always here to support. We're always here to help. And, whether it be any aspect, whether it be you're interested in, in what Fund the First is doing more or business stuff. Michael and I, we love, and we don't want to talk for hours, but we love talking about business and how to help others because a lot of people, you know, and I'll use myself for example, as a detective, you live in a bubble for the most part. You're, you're a career um, police officer, law enforcement officer. And then when you re retire, what do you say you're going to do? All right, I'm going to live off my pension, but I'm also going to get a security gig. Or I'm gonna do um, private investigation. And you don't even can't be any more true because I prepare tax returns for a ton of officers, firefighters, and it's the same thing, the same story. And they, they don't know they're gonna retire at age 45, and it's like, what do they do next? They they yeah. got their pension, but they could go get a full time job somewhere, or while they're approaching retirement, they can start a business. 
Mm -hmm. And that's even much, that's, it's much more rewarding because guess what? You get to choose what you want to do with that business. So think about it before, you know, it gets too late and you're going to retire, start planning, do it 10 years before you're going to retire. You know, kind of like how Robert did it. You know, he's got a, a, a bunch more years left, but you know, he started a business. He's, he created something, created a nest egg, and hopefully in five to 10 years, it grows to be something that, you know, allows him to do it full time as well in retirement years. So you guys got to start early. If you're in the first responder industry, start thinking about what you want to do. Uh, getting a, a side job is great. Uh, but if you want to control your own destiny and your future, you got to start a business. Yeah. And it goes for anybody in life. You know, when you think about it, what are we all doing? We're all, we're all uh, indoctrinated basically to go to school and to find a job. Why, why are we not taught to basically go out there and not find the job, but start our own job, start our own career path, start our own business. That's what we should be trained on how to do, how to start your own business, because you don't learn that in school. You learn how to get that job. You learn how to work different aspects of whatever field you're going into. But in school, do you learn how to raise capital? Do you learn how to authorize shares in a company? You know, do you, do you learn how to put together a team and understand all different aspects of what being a CEO or a CFO or a COO of a company is? No, because what, you, what you're taught is you aspire to get the job as the low person on the totem pole to work yourself up to being the chief operating officer or the CEO one day. You're not taught to automatically go into that CEO role. And it does take a certain type of mindset. It definitely does. You know, it's a lot of drive. It's a lot of work. It's hours and days and years of not sleeping. You know, it's, it's really, really has to do with a lot of motivation and having that willpower to get all that together. But that's something that I'm, I want to instill in my children. I have three children. I want them to understand that, you know, don't chase the job, chase your future. And your future is starting that own job yourself. Yes. So. Chase, you know, I chased my dream trying to become a professional baseball player. I worked my butt off at it. And, um, you know, it, there's so many talented guys out there across the, the, the world that make it to the major leagues and that don't make it to the major leagues. I mean, Derek Jeter, the guy who played below him in AAA, you know, and the guy played, who played below him in AA, they're all talented enough to make it to the major leagues. It's just that Jeter was with the Yankees for so many years that the guy never, below him never got the opportunity. Um, so the point is, you know, try and create an opportunity for yourself. And in business, you control your own destiny. You know, if, if, it's, if it's going to fail, you'll know pretty quick because people won't be buying your product. You know, our business in the last 10 months has had success. Uh, you know, we didn't know what, what to expect going into this. We thought it was going to work. We hoped it was going to work. Um, and we all dreamed that it can get to a bigger, you know, a, a great point. Um, but it just takes time. You got to, you got to grind. You got to keep pushing towards your, your vision and your dream. So, you know, create something um, and go after it and work hard at it. And, and, you know, if you got to work on the weekends and work at night, that's what it is. You come home, eat dinner after your nine to five job, you start working from seven to 11. You know, why waste the time sitting on the couch watching television? That's a waste of time. Think about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm relaxing. I'm watching a show. But four hours a day, seven days a week, you can stop wasting time here and start creating and getting on the computer and doing some real work to create your, your vision for the future on what your business could be. I don't like to watch television and sit around watching movies and TV shows on Netflix for four hours a day. It's to me, I'm just wasting my time. So I like to think and create and work on my businesses. That's perfectly said. Perfectly said. So for anyone listening again, thank you. You know, Michael and I really enjoyed speaking. Uh, this was great. And we hope to uh, hope to come back again to speak to you all. Mm -hmm.